feedback there. We get our Fey of Wishes. <clears throat> so, let's see what we're dealing with. An Eco Bolas. So that's fine. We're going to immediately remove that. Kaya's Wrath, maybe. I like to post that up in my hand, just let him see it forever. Two Fae of Wishes. Now, that's, this is fun. Let's get into our, our sideboard here. We know he's Grixis. So we could get the rest of his flock. Rule of Law is also great, but he's got those huge Planeswalkers. Right? So we're going to take Unmarred Ego. Play it next turn, hopefully. And let's get this on the field now. So we do have Vigilance. He needs to deal with our field. Because we've got him on somewhat relevant timer. And he also needs to play his other Bolas, maybe. If he can get it out immediately. Let's see, though. If he doesn't, we're going to scoop it out. And I mean, even if he does, we have Planar Cleansing. What did he get? What did he get? What did he get? I'm not sure why it wouldn't have come up the other way there. That's weird. So he's got a Ritual of Suit and a Swamp. And we get the three boluses. Conceivable. We're gonna pay life for that. Our Fay of Wishes is gonna take Dance the Mats for us. And that is going to be just about game, I think, you guys. Let's see what he draws here. Oh, yeah! Hey, everybody. So. Welcome back. You're watching Hello Good Game. And today, uh, Elelia, the Esper Queen, is making her appearance. We're bringing Esper back. Um, there's no reason that it's Tier 4. I seen it ranked as that yesterday. Um, I'm a terrible Esper player. And I can tell you it's a better deck than that. I think people are just misutilizing a lot of cards. Uh, so let's try to maybe correct some misconceptions here and try to uh, show you just how powerful it can be. Um, before we get started, I want to talk about Fae of Wishes. This card is absolutely broken for best of one in an Esper or Blue, or is it any deck that incorporates Blue, really. Uh, it's similar to Mastermind's Acquisition, but you're not locked into strictly Black for playing it because that was... Uh, Two swamps you needed for Mastermind's Acquisition, whereas Fave Wishes, you just need a single island, uh, which can be manifested in a variety of ways quite easily. Um, so you may choose a non-creature card from outside the game, reveal it, put it into your hand. This is great. So this is going to give us access to a sideboard in a best of one game. That's incredible. Uh, in best of two, it's still great because you get access to all these cards without having to draw them in your deck, right? You have utility. Um, but in best of one, that is absolutely broken. This should be everything. Okay, so incorporate this Fave Wishes into all of your decks uh, because it's bad ass. Uh, we have four Thought Razors, so target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non land card from it, that player uh, discards that card, and you get to surveil one, which is one. Golden Egg, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. This is an artifact, we'll be using this to sacrifice when we're playing Doom Foretold later. And then you can pay one, sacrifice it early, add a mana of any color. So this can be kind of helpful to get a Caius Wrath off uh, because the colors can be kind of tricky to get there right <clears throat> and then you can pay two sacrifice it gain three life maybe against a red deck if we really needed and then guild globe is very similar when it enters battlefield draw a card you pay two sacrifice it and then you're adding two mana of different colors this time instead of one pardon my yawns it's very early and uh of course we have two murderous riders for planeswalker removal um this is uh, a two swamp card here so a little bit uh, later on, probably, that we'll be casting this. We'll wait till those planes lockers 
get buffed up, like we'll say, believe in Nissa gets a seven or eight before we remove it, just so he's spending those turns on it. Um, if we need anyway, so like a Chandra, maybe, um, because we only have two of them, so if we can't deal with them, again, we want to wait until we have something else that can deal with them, if that makes sense. And then uh, Swift End, destroy target creature or planeswalker, you gain two life. Most likely these are the planeswalkers, like we talked about, because if they're creatures, we're just going to be wiping them. Uh, unless it's a really big bad guy and we don't have a sweeper. But then you can pay him again for his creature, and then uh, <clears throat> when it dies, he goes to the bottom of the owner's library, and he is at 2-3 with lifelink. So this is one of our few ways to gain life in this deck. So we have Murderous Rider, we have Oath of Kaya, and uh, we can sacrifice our Golden Egg as well. So a couple different ways to gain life, but uh, it is tricky sometimes. Four to Fairy Time Ravelers. Each opponent can only cast spells each time they can cast a sorcery. So we're talking no instances, uh, nothing on the stack. Plus one until the end of your next turn, you may cast uh, sorcery spells as if they've had flash, which is really cool. And then minus three, return target artifact creature or enchantment to its owner's hand and draw a card. Oath of Kaya. When Oath of Kaya enters the battlefield, it will deal three damage to any target and you gain three life. Uh, when an opponent attacks a planeswalker, you control. With one or more creatures, Oath of Kaya deals two damage to that player and you gain two life. Doom Foretold. Uh, this is the nuke of the deck. This is in all of the new Esper um, decks. It's also in the Orzhov decks right now. It's just how powerful this card is. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, they discard a card. They lose two life. You draw a card. You gain two life. And you create a 2-2 white knight with vigilance. Then you sacrifice Doom Foretold. So very, very cool, especially if they've got multiple permanents out. You can play this, and uh, if you have them out as well, you can just sacrifice them, get ahead of them. Uh, we have Golden Egg, Guild Globe, Oath of Kaya, things like this to sacrifice. We have Kaya's Wrath as a sweeper. Uh, destroy all creatures. You gain life equal to the number of creatures you control this way, or that died this way. And then Planar Cleansing. This is really cool because we like to get all of our stuff out, right? If we don't get Doom Foretold, and we have Dance of the Mats handy, we play in our cleansing, wipe all of our stuff, wipe all of their stuff, and then we play Dance the Mats next turn, bring all of that stuff right back to the field, and boom, uh, that should be enough to do it. We've got a, a couple lands here. We're down to two Fable Passages. Uh, we're down to three basics. We want to have two basics, and then one extra if, uh, say, our opponent destroys one of our lands and we're forced to search. Um, sorry, we actually have five. Uh, these two planes we're hiding up top. Castle Vantress for the Scry and Castle Lockthwain for the draw. Uh, really, really late game on Castle Lockthwain, though. You don't want to kill yourself. And let's get into the sideboard, which, like I said, in Best of One becomes accessible with Fae of Wishes. We have a Disenchant, a Legion's End, two Elder Spells, one D-Spark, one Rule of Law, two Ashiox, one Unmoored Ego, two Revenge of Ravens, one Doom Foretold, one Kai's Wrath, one Elea, Artful Provocator, one Dance the Mats. Right, so a couple of these are utility cards that we might just need. Uh, Dance the Mance, we might just need. Kai's Wrath, we might just need. Doom Foretold, we might just need. Uh, the rest are kind of uh, utility cards based on what deck you're using, right? So the cards I just listed are for your play style to increase the effectiveness of that. And then we have uh, things to kind of screw up our opponents, right? So Revenge of Ravens. This is going to shut up Field of the Dead, finally. Um, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life okay so they're gonna basically just mill themselves because they have so many field of the dead tokens out uh <clears throat> which is great because you're gonna be gaining life each time so they're only doing one damage to you which is pretty fun we also have an unmoored ego uh we can take field of the dead out if they've not played it yet we can take golos out uh things like this right just anything that our opponent has that's going to absolutely beat us and if their deck is single strategy or like single minded not really uh wide but it's like pretty narrow on how they win the game just take their win condition out easy peasy lemon squeezy right uh ashiok dream render this will stop searcher's root uh things like this that your opponent is want to, wanting to play for ramp so it also kind of shuts up uh the golos deck quite well rule of law we have this for fire of invention uh, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. That puts you both on that playing level playing field again. D Spark, maybe this is to kill Anissa. Something uh, really big and bad. 
We also have some elder spells uh, if we're dealing with any really big planes or, or like a, a mass amount of planeswalkers. We'll probably play the elder spell over the D spark. Uh, we'll probably keep this D spark for something that needs exiling that we don't want them uh, to bring back. So if they are playing a reanimator deck, uh, for example, this D spark will come in handy because then he can't uh, bring it back from the graveyard. Ashok's great for that as well. Uh, Legion's End, if he's got any, uh, I say, Hero of the Precinct one, this is great for that. Knight of the Ebon Legion, things like that. So those little baddies that just have so much value packed into them, that's what we're going to want to use Legion's End on. And then, of course, Disenchant, Destroy Target, Artifact, or Enchantment. We could also use this to stop fires. We could use this to stop uh, Doom for Tolds on, on us. Um, yeah, anything that needs dealing with, we have this. Uh, glass casket, things like that. Anywho, so this is uh, Elelia, the Esper Queen. It's uh, not Esper Stex, it's more Esper Doom, but with uh, the tokens, which is great. So we should be gaining life from the tokens that we're wiping as well. So we get Elelia out, uh, build all those tokens by playing our artifacts and enchantments. And then when we wipe the field with, say, Kai's Wrath, we are going to get one life for each token, which is great. Uh, we could also get those in because those are flyers, right? So that's really, really good. If you enjoyed that deck breakdown, make sure to like and comment on this video. And if you didn't, let me know why so I can improve. Um, Not bad. We have a draw. We've got two draws plus our Fae of Wishes, which is great. And a Thought Erasure, which is probably even better. So it doesn't look bad. Let's get in here. Slow start, but we'll make the most of it. Okay, Midnight Reaper in a Gruul deck. So this is weird. Um, let's see if he does play Swamps to keep with it. Um, it's kind of screwed up. Let's get this Thought Erasure in. We'll deal with the Midnight Reaper later. Oh my god. So I'm pretty confused because he just sacked his his goose, so he's really relying on this land drop. And we're going to get rid of his priest. We're going to keep the land ourselves. And with that, we might have just sealed the deal here. We'll see. Midnight Reaper is still going to be a little bit for us to deal with. Let's get that draw in. Hopefully we pull another land. He's creating that food token, which is annoying for us. We may as well do this now. It doesn't really matter. Um, We need that second swamp. And now we're just looking for a plains. Two more guild globes, another thought erasure. He did draw a priest, that dirty dog. Let's grab a draw again. Just looking for some more land. Bad luck on that. Two Thought Erasures, though, plus one in the graveyard. So we've got quite a bit of utility, but we're already down to 12 life. He's uh, doing absolute work on us with this Midnight Reaper because we're getting landlocked. I need everything but four Thought Erasures. I guess we'll play Teferi and bounce Midnight Reaper. That's probably a more efficient way of doing this. Let's slow this down. There's a land, finally. So we need a Plains, but we can fix our mana by sacrificing our Egg. Because we don't have Doom Foretold in our hand. He himself has a pretty aggressive hand.
We have Mayhem Devil Drop, which is fine. And he could trigger that real time, which is aggressive and gross. That's how it was meant to happen. Um, no, we don't need that right now. We're so low in life. Let's just go for it. <clears throat> it's kind of a bummer because we do sacrifice things. He's just taking it though. He's got no food tokens, no swamp, and that's game. So Thought Erasure obviously is just coming in number one because you get to see your opponent's hand. You get to isolate or to identify what threats are what and then isolate them. Obviously we knew that his Priest of the Forgotten Gods was incredibly important there because he didn't have any swamps. Things like that. Let's see if we can get a little deeper into a, a match here. We like this as well. We're going first. We need to open up with the scry as well. So that's pretty groovy. Bay of Wishes we already have. Do we need two of them? It's going to cost four. Let's toss it for now and dig for a Doom Foretold. Because we already have one. So there's no need for that really. And we just picked up a Doom Foretold as well. We're going to go in deep. Get a nice early draw out here. Another guild blow. That's beautiful. If he plays anything serious, we can bounce it. Nice. Most likely losing our Doom Foretold here. Could lose our Teferi, though. Okay, so he takes our Fae of Wishes, and he mills his own Liliana. Let's take another draw. That's the Mance, I don't mind that. This can come in tapped. Here you go, bruh. So he sees I have Doom Foretold. He's gonna wanna do something about that next turn. Narset, that's fine. He gets a draw. He's playing Grixis, it would appear. There's fires. So we need our Fae of Wishes to dig out our Rule of Law. So this is gonna get tricky. Let's play another Guild Globe. Get that land. Oh, oops, nice. Uh, can't draw. Narset totally screws us up. You think we would have learned this lesson uh, by now, but we still make this mistake sometimes. That's hilarious, you guys. So here's fires. We're gonna have a hard time keeping up now for sure. We need to get into our sideboard here. Absolutely beautiful. This will work perfectly. Doom foretold will save us. So, made a massive mistake, but nonetheless, it's not necessarily about drawing the cards, it's about getting the artifacts out. We could have played a Teferi and sacked that as well, but. It's fun this way. Let's see how he deals with my Doom Foretold. He should post up and just keep his cards in his hand and let me draw, but he's going to go for it. Obviously taking Dance the Mance. That would be the smartest play, yeah. He's killing us with these Thought Erasures, and that's how we won last round. 
So that makes me scared to see our opponent uh, popping off like that. Taking out Guild Globe. Playing our Teferi. I know my responsibility. We're losing our Teferi. So we don't want to balance that. We want him to have to sacrifice it. This can come and tap, and that's our turn. So there goes his field of invention. Absolutely dealt with. He's got to pass his turn here. Pays life to play his Chandra, which he now has to sacrifice next turn. Incredibly interesting stuff. Let's see how he handles it. Okay, so he uses this huge minus ability on my Teferi. That's fine. Let's play Teferi again. Let's minus on my egg. Play my egg. Draw land. Let's see what we draw here. Another Guild Globe. Very nice. There goes his Chandra. Let's see what else he's got to play. Or if he's just going to post up. Another Chandra. It's just letting us eat these cards up, you guys. Absolutely great value. He's down to three cards. We have a Sweeper. Have 18 life and an Oath of Kaya sitting pretty. He should put a counter on me instead of killing my Teferis. He definitely should be putting counters on me. That's fine. We'll do a scry first. See what we're going to draw. Land can go. Playing our guild glow for next turn. Playing our cleansing, I appreciate quite a bit. Hmm. I guess we'll play our Oath of Kaya now. It doesn't really matter. Let's target him. He has to sacrifice his Chandra here because Doom foretold. We're looking for a Fae of Wishes so we can get sideboard access. Drawn from Dreams. That's fine. The only way he can really get out of it is by two low-cost creatures, Planeswalkers. He doesn't have white, so there's no access to Teferi. So we're fine from bounces. Our Oath of Kaya can go. We're going to have to draw a card here this turn because he doesn't have anything. And my mouse is dying. That's sad. Pardon that feedback there. We get our Fae of Wishes. <clears throat> so... Let's see what we're dealing with. An eco bolus. So that's fine. We're going to immediately remove that. I have plenty of land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands. Um, is that necessary? Probably not, but do we need this Kaya's Wrath? Maybe. I, I like to post that up in my hand, just let him see it forever. Ago. Two Fae of Wishes. Now that's, this is fun. Let's get into our, our sideboard here. We know he's Grixis, so we could get the rest of his flock. Rule of Law is also great, but he's got those huge Planeswalkers, right? So we're going to take Unmarred Ego, play it next turn, hopefully, and let's get this on the field now. So we do have Vigilance. He needs to deal with our field because we've got him on 
somewhat relevant timer, and he also needs to play his other bolus, maybe, if he can get it out immediately. Let's see, though. If he doesn't, we're going to scoop it out. And I mean, even, even if he does, we have planar cleansing. What did he get? What did he get? What did he get? the hell's its name? Isn't it Bolus? I'm not sure why it wouldn't have come up the other way there. That's weird. So he's got a Ritual of Suit and a Womp. And we get the three boluses. We're going to pay life for that. Our Fae of Wishes is going to take Dance the Mats for us. And that is going to be just about game, I think, you guys. Let's see what he draws here. Oh, yeah! So, Day of Wishes, best card in the set. Uh, let me know what you think below in the comments. I absolutely think so. What a beast of a card in best of one. Uh, just incredible stuff. If you've enjoyed... Uh, me bringing back Esper, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, a quick reminder to all our subscribers that they're entered in to win up to half a million in gems. Make sure you check away, check out my gem giveaway video uh, to familiarize yourself with all of that because it's a lot to talk about every single day. Even this is a lot. With that being said, let's get right back into some matches. Uh, a lot of lands and not a lot of anything else. Opponent goes first. I don't know. Let's see how this goes for us. Um, we'll get a scry out first. That's always the funnest. Most fun. Uh, we're going to toss that land. We've, we've seen enough. So we have an is it land um, plus once upon a time. Plus planes, so we're looking at uh, a whole collection here. Dun, 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 dun. Let's get right in there. Take our draw. He's growth spiraling into Field of the Dead. Okay. Okay. So this is probably five color deck. There it is. There's his grazer. There that is. Holy moly, you guys. This guy's popping right off. Let's check that little hand of his out. Let's see what's good. Cancel. We need to play this bad boy. Golos and Realm Cloaks Giants. Oh my god. So, how do we deal with these Realm Cloaks Giants via sideboard? We have our Kai's Wrath. We're going to need this anyways. He's already got Field of the Dead out, so we can't name that. We need to get our Fae and look for the Raven card. <sighs> kind of a bummer. Let's give him a 1-2, though, I guess. That can come in tapped. Both of these lands are untapped now, so we only have one more tapped land. And we're just chilling. Chilling like a villain. Really nothing to play this turn, so. We're just gonna chill. 
Maybe I should play my Murderous Rider. Golos. E E A beautiful. He would. He definitely would. Okay, so Ashiok would have been great as well. Because then he's not searching here. But again, we had no fave wishes uh, come up yet, so nothing we've been able to access. Let's resolve. Sorry, getting a little bit restless. I just woke up. We haven't eaten yet. We do pull our fave wishes, but are we too late? Are we too late? Are we too late? Are we too late? I don't think so. I do not think so. Let's get our fave wishes in action. Revenge of Ravens should do the trick. Let's hold that back for now. So Revenge of Ravens, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker, you control that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life, which is great. We do want to take an Ashiok as well. But we have to destroy the creatures before we play Ashiok, whereas we can play this before the creatures are destroyed. Getting a lot of damage, seven damage. Should we see what he just drew? And let's check it out. A growth spiral. We're getting rid of that just because it allows him to maybe draw more land, which we don't want yet. He's scrying before he draws. That means he's in full control, like a smart laddie do. Puts one to the top, one to the bottom. It's a land. Okay, let's get our Revenge of Ravens out. I'm going to play this for life gain as well. Kind of force him into his giant. Let's take the islands there. Okay, so he's playing it as a creature. He's going to destroy all non-giant creatures. So we are on a short timer. 
and we need access to our sideboard again. Passing our turn. He does destroy his zombies by doing that though. And a huge Hydroid Crasis. He's getting a massive draw here, so that makes it pretty hard to contend with. And we're back to needing to wipe the field again. Still taking quite a bit of damage here. And damage, kind of a bummer, so this equation's not necessarily working out to our favor. And he's got a stacked hand, so it's gonna be hard to make it through this. Let's see if we can. Golos Bant is obviously the best uh, the best in the biz right now, so we have one, two, three, four land, which is great. We're forced into a field wipe though, which sucks. There's Golos looking for more land, and we don't have another field wipe, you guys. I think that's going to be game for us. only thing we can do is play another Raven to nullify some of this damage. Right? We're going in for our second Raven's Revenge. It's the only thing we can do right now. This guy is so aggressive. Let's grab it right now. I mean, Legion's End would do it as well, but he's just going to keep doing it. So let's stack that. This can stay in our hand to discard. That's everything we have to offer. Obviously, the Realm Cloak Giant can bash us as well. And that Teferi, which can bounce no our Revenge of Ravens. So that's going to be game. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. Uh, quick reminder to follow us on Twitch. We are streaming all month raising charity for Extra Life 2019. We're part of Team Aetherhub, which is really cool. So come check us out there. Join the conversation, etc., etc. Let me know what you thought of the Esper deck. We didn't get a chance to get Elelia out, but nonetheless, it's still there, and that's still the base of it. And mostly, I wanted to focus on showcasing Fae of Wishes and how important that is in best of one matches. So, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you all tomorrow.